Today, ING is well known as a multinational with Dutch roots. The proud orange lion adorns offices all around the world, like here in Italy, France, Great Britain, the US, Turkey, and many others. Everywhere we have one thing in common, our purpose, empowering people to stay a step ahead in life and business. But when did the story start? Some of ING's businesses can trace their roots back to 1762, when John and Francis Baring started a bank in London. Or to the mid-19th century, when Banque de Bruxelles was founded in Belgium. In the Netherlands, it all started with the Rijksbos Bank. The savings bank was founded by the Dutch government in 1881 to encourage workers to start saving. Four decades later, the Dutch introduced another service to help people manage their finances. The Postcheck en Girodienst, founded in 1918, allowed families and businesses to make payments via mail or local post offices. In the decades thereafter, the Postgiro would continuously improve the efficiency of the payment system, increasingly with automated systems. The economic crisis of the 20s prompted the Dutch government to initiate a reorganization of Dutch banks serving small and middle-sized businesses. Out of that, in 1927, the Nederlandse Bank NMB, was born. As the 20th century roared on, global, technical and economic developments made it interesting for businesses to combine into bigger ones, and countries sold state-owned business to the private sector. In 1986, the Postgiro and Rijksbos Bank were privatized and combined as Postbank with a stock exchange listing in 1989. Not much later, Postbank merged with NMB to form the NMB Postbank Group. Further deregulation made mergers between insurers and banks possible. And so, in 1991, the NMB Postbank Group and insurance company Nationale Nederlanden joined forces into the Internationale Nederlanden Group while retaining their individual brand identities. The market soon abbreviated the name to ING, and the multinational as we know it today spread its wings. ING rapidly expanded its international business. A major step was the acquisition of Bearings Bank in 1995. This, next to all the other acquisitions, increased ING's brand recognition around the world and strengthened its wholesale banking presence in emerging markets like Asia. ING also spread its wings on the capital markets. ING shares started trading on the New York Stock Exchange in 1997. ING further increased its presence in Europe by joining forces with other banks such as Banque Bruxelles Lombard in 1998. In the next years, also in other European countries, banks were acquired. Bank Slaski in Poland, BHF and Direct Bank in Germany and Oyak Bank in Turkey were brought under the umbrella of the lion. But ING didn't only expand through acquisitions. The revolutionary branchless ING Direct concept was introduced in France, Spain, Italy and even Australia, offering customers a small range of simple products and exemplary service through call centres and the internet. And in 2007, ING decided to combine the Postbank with its Blue Lion logo with the other Dutch retail operations. Now, the 7.5 million customers in ING's home market continued their banking activities under the orange ING flag. When the global financial crisis shook the world in 2008, ING also had major setbacks, making it necessary to get help from the Dutch state. This prompted a smart reassessment of ING's strategy. The aid was repaid and many businesses were sold, including all of the insurance and investment management operations. ING bounced back and came out stronger, thinking forward, combining new technology with its centuries of experience. Today, more than 51,000 ING employees offer retail and wholesale banking services to over 37 million customers in more than 40 countries. ING, empowering people since 1762.